Yes, guys, I'm Sai. Welcome back to H Podcast Nation. And a little special quick show here. I'm joined by a filmmaker, TV host, radio host, podcast host, <laughs> bit of everything. Uh, Jack of all trades, yeah, so, you know. <laughs> uh, Mr. Johnny Owen, how are you, my friend? I'm very good, mate. How are you? I'm fantastic, mate. Really, really happy to uh, to be able to sit here and have a chat with you. We've been obviously talking about it for a while. We have, yeah. And uh, you're just... The, the most busy man on the planet. I don't think I've ever seen anyone just be like every day <laughs> going somewhere <laughs> doing something. It's uh, it's mad. But um, tonight you are on BBC One, BBC Two. I'm BBC One at uh, 25 to 11. You've just kindly picked me up from the Vale of Glamorgan where I've been in filming with Rob Page and a few of the players, um, previewing the game, the massive game, yet another massive game in Welsh football side, as you know. This Tuesday against Poland, the playoff final to get to another Euro is incredible. Can't get used to this qualification thing, me still. <laughs> Four and eight it's years, mate, it's mental, isn't it? <laughs> well, we were just saying in the car, like, we had come to terms with probably not qualifying. Yeah, it's true. You just kind of, yeah, it's not going to happen in my lifetime. And then, like you say, four on the, four, not quite on the balance, but four. Far off, yeah. My kids, that's all they know. Same it's, for me, my daughter. She thinks this, uh, yeah, this is normal. This is what I keep, we do. We just I, qualify. All <laughs> I keep saying to her, we hadn't qualified. This is 1958 before that. <laughs> Even I wasn't around then. <laughs> <laughs> what's, um, what's the mood like in the, in the camp? It's good, mate. It's, um, it's confident, but it's not overconfident. Um, I think they, like us, you know, after Armenia, would have snapped your hand off to be in a position of one more game at home to qualify for the Euros. Uh, what I think we've got, I mean, you had a long chat about it in the car coming down. We've lost arguably our greatest ever player in Gareth Bale and, and another world-class player has probably gone past his peak now, Aaron Ramsey. But what we've got is we've got a lot of very, very good players, I believe. We've got some youngsters who have the potential to go on to be world-class, as we've spoken about, people like Ethan and Brennan. Um, but at the moment, we've got all these players who are all operating on what I call like a seven or eight out of 10 playing for their clubs, playing for the country. So, you know, we've got every chance. We're very good at home. They're, they're very good. Obviously, everyone knows about their danger man, Lewandowski. But, the, the, you know, home form is is important for us. The crowd is important for us. It's an amazing atmosphere down there, as you know, the Cardiff City Stadium. So, you know, we've got to embrace these nights. Like you just said, we often didn't make it, but now we are. We've got to enjoy it. Yeah, it's special, isn't it? It's a special night at the Cardiff City Stadium for the Welsh Games particularly. It just seems to be... Is that mobile going to uh, get interrupt you? It's, it's not no, mine. It's, it's not mine. It's not mine. It's mine. It's mine. I was just about to... Vicky, you're a disgrace. I'm in the middle of a podcast and I had my phone on accidentally and you disrupted it. <laughs> Sorry, that was my fault. I should have done the phone. What a disgrace. All right. I know. I'm never having on. All right. Sorry, go. I'm back. Sorry, do you want to start again? No, you're all right. I'll, um, I'll can you edit? Yeah. You can you put that in if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I can, I can advertise it. It's because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because of the old days. <laughs> um, Yes, no, so I was just saying. We haven't got any superstars, though, mate. Well, what we have got is Christian Roberts. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, I was, um, I was interviewing um, Connor Roberts last night and I kept calling him Christian Roberts. Obviously, because I remember the Cardiff guy, the paper Bristol City, and he played for Cardiff for a little bit, but I don't know why. And he looked at me, bless him, and he went, You do know I'm Connor Roberts, don't you? And he's from Swansea as well. Can you yeah, imagine what he was like? He's probably thinking he's having a laugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, listen, we got some, um, we, we have got very, very good players. And, um, you know, fingers crossed, everything sort of is there for us, as we said. Amazing atmosphere at the Cardiff City Stadium. So, you know, let's, uh, let's, let's enjoy it as much as we can. I say enjoy it, Sai, but we're not going to enjoy it. We? <laughs> well, do you know what? Like, I went into Thursday against Finland fully expecting to be the usual stressed, anxious, like, all the way through to the last minute, like tearing my hair out, what little hair I've got left. <laughs> and um, it was just, it was relatively stress-free. Like, you know, early goal in the first half, early goal in the second half. Probably should have had that goal, which was disallowed yeah. as well. And it was comfortable, but, and like I said to you in the car, as you know, everyone was excellent. There were, there was, you know, little moments where you could say, mm, maybe you could do a bit better, but overall, everything was just so incredibly good to great. 
that you're almost like, God, if we could play like that against anyone at home, you'd fancy us. Ethan Ampadu for me, though, when it is then potentially is going to go to the very top. I just thought he was so good. Um, and he's one of those players where in that position, it seems to be almost those players don't get talked about as much as some of the others. Like Harry Wilson was outstanding, got man of the match. But that the role which Ethan Ampadu plays, you know, if Nico Williams is going forward and the play breaks down, Ethan Ampadu just sweeps across naturally. And Connor Roberts, Christian Roberts, just, <laughs> just sort of shifts in and they all shift across. And it's, you can see it's very well drilled. Um, and another thing which I said to you in the car and people who watch my stuff will know, look, I've been at times critical of Robert Page. But one thing I will say is he did everything right on Thursday from substitutes to tactics to in-game sort of little tweaks. And I think if you're going to criticise anyone, you should also give them credit when they get it right. And I think he did a phenomenal job on Thursday and hopefully he will do it again. Yeah, Tuesday. no, I, I couldn't agree more with every word you say, Si. I mean, in football, we are very quick to criticise and I've been guilty of that many times, but when they get it right, we need to speak about that as well. Everything was spot on, you know, the tactics, the way we set up, his, you know, his selection, two eyebrows raised, mm -hmm. he left Kiefer and Dan James on the bench, but that gave us options and it certainly changed things as well with sort of 35 minutes to go. Um, and I think, What's interesting about Rob is, is that <laughs> he's the most successful Welsh manager ever. You know, he's, 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 which, when you think about it, it's, it's insane. And yet he gets sometimes the most criticism. I think Armenia was a big moment, you know, that, that post-game a lot of people were talking. And the main criticism seems to be that tactically he could be a little bit naive. Well, I think that's proved to be nonsense now. I mean, yeah. when I was up there with the, the statisticians and everybody else, apparently he's meticulous, you know. So, you know, that's, that's just simply not true. And also... You know, he was very good and Ashley Williams was there talking about it's very different international football. You know, you're not a domestic manager. You can't do drills and set pieces every day for weeks on end. You've only got it for two or three days. You know, the fact that we'd worked that free kick out with that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Harry took and then, sorry, Harry was going to take it and Nico took, yeah. was very impressive because you just haven't got the time. It's about recoveries, you know, in international, not anything else. So, you know, it, you know, I agree. Give him give him the credit. If, he, if we do qualify, touch wood, then he is without doubt. He's got us to two major tournaments. He oversaw was part of a third one. Well, I mean, that's remarkable. I mean, we all talk about the brilliant Chris Coleman, Cookie, you know, and Jimmy Murphy, the two great Welsh managers because they, they got us to tournaments. But but Rob potentially is on, on the cusp of two, you know, and being part of three major tournament qualifications. Incredible. So I think, you know, if if we can, let's try and get behind the boys. I know we will. And, you know, I even said that we don't worst case scenario, if we do just fail this hurdle. You know, we've got a lot of players coming through. There's a load of youngsters. You were talking about the boys at Kumas coming through from the 21s. You know, Isaac was over in was over in Belgium playing great. You know, all these lads are sort of on the cusp. You know, we've just got to be, we've got to realise we're a country with a finite amount of resource when it comes to players, just because of who we are. Um, but we're actually in the best position we've been in for a long time. I thought, say there would be a longer hangover because... Any country that lost their greatest ever player, and I do think Gareth Bale was the greatest ever player. Absolutely. I think he's, you know, I think he's past even the great John Charles. Is going to take a little, little time to not just recover, readjust, and we've done it in the same qualifying tournament. We've managed to get to a playoff final. So for that and all those reasons alone, like you said, let's give him credit. He got it right. Let's get you know, give him, and let's hope he gets it right again tomorrow night. Yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? Like when you look at the average age is twenty five on Thursday. And you're looking at that, and like you say, there was some eyebrows raised. Kiefer Moore, I think everyone expected him to start. Yeah. And you, but then, do you know what it did as well? Is yes, there was eyebrows raised, but I think it also lifted the crowd before the game because they thought oh, he's going to go for this. Yeah. You know, he's going to have this a lot of pace and like raw energy, which you can only play one way with players like that. Yeah. You know, you're not going to park the bus when you've got you know three under six foot uh, forward players and things like that. So I think. Um, that was exciting in itself before the game had even kicked off. And then to see it come to fruition within, what, five minutes or whatever when they scored, it's, it was almost like the perfect script, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so I think what would be nice now is if we can do the same against Poland and it's completely stress-free. But like I do agree with you, is if it doesn't quite happen for whatever reason, you know, think these things happen in football, 
It could be last minute deflected goal or anything. Penalty. It's not a disaster. We haven't yeah. got a load of great players retiring. No. We're actually with a, we've got a lot of boys all on 50 caps, as you said. We've got it's two incredible. incredible midfield players coming through in Ethan and JJ. You know, we've got all those options up front, pace to burn. You've got players very comfortable on the ball. So you're thinking, Ooh, you know what, this is a decent team. Let's stick with them. Let's stick with the manager. They all they all come out in support of Rob after the Armenia game, which tells you everything. There was no stories, rumblings, certainly in the camp. In fact, they bunkered down, which I always think is a great sign. So I was thinking, you know what, let's stick with this and let's stick with, you know, with, with what he's trying to set up there. And last night, say, I thought it was really interesting. He, t- oh, he talked about philosophy. And Ash said something really interesting. He said, look, the 2016 team had superstars in it, world-class players, players at the top of their form in Aaron. Aaron had a sensational Euros, as we know, Gareth Bale, obviously Bale. But he said, we were we were greater than the sum of our parts. We did have a lot of boys who were in the championship. And Ash was saying this, he's actually player to player. This team is better player to player. So we haven't quite got those two superstars yet. But he said, as a player, a player we're actually in, in a, a stronger position. And he said, I can see that we'll try and play a certain way when we can. Now listen, we are going to play the Frances and Germanys at times, and yeah. that's different. But mostly against these kind of countries like Finland and the Poland's and Turkey's, you know, we are going to have a go. Whereas in the past, as you know better than me, we often relied on great players to get us out of holes, you yeah, know, and, and take the chance. Yeah. Well, Russia, I, one of the greatest ever moments I was there when we scored against Germany. They were world champions. Mm-hmm. We defended magnificently, but we had one ch- well, but half a chance, yeah. and he took it because he's Ian Rush. He's the greatest mm-hmm. striker, arguably, in the world. We relied on those moments, as, as you saw in Finland, less so now, I think. Yeah, and I think that you made a great point there about them when there was pressure on after that Armenia game. They all were behind the manager. Yes. There was the n- no rumblings and stuff like that. And I think I agree with you. Like It's so indicative of the squad as a whole, the how together they are. And I think in international football, that's massive. That's like you saw it in 2016 in France, that squad was so together. And I know Ashley Williams has talked about it a lot in, I've watched his podcast recently, like he, he's talked about like that togetherness and yeah. how much, you know, they were friends as well as, you know, teammates. Yeah. And it makes a huge difference because they'll run through a brick wall for each other. They'll run through a brick wall for the manager and when, things don't go your way or you're one nil down or or you're losing with a few minutes to go. That's what you need is you yeah. need that sort of passion, but also that togetherness. I'm excited, but I am I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a bit nervous. <laughs> We're all gonna be nervous, I mean so. <laughs> I did my uh, I did my preview last night and part of the preview is you look at the other team and you're looking at their tactics and I'm kinda of looking at their right winger and then oh, Frankowski he looks danger. But then, you know, they're looking at the Welsh squad exactly the same. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, two pretty evenly matched teams, you say, both sort of like, you know, didn't qualify automatically or, you know, you know had to go through the playoff route. Uh, you kind of, I think they're only a few apart in the world rankings. Lewandowski obviously is, is obviously a danger, but getting a bit older. I was shouldn't say this because he's a lovely mm. lad and great. I was delighted to hear the Matty Cash. It's not yeah. playing because he's a very good player uh, for Villa. He came through the Forest Academy, a really, really good player. So listen, you know, we've been very lucky on on um form and injuries. You were talking about on the way down. All our players seem to be playing and playing well. That's massive. And Ben Davis said to me last night, even the ones we asked to come in, like you know, like Danny Ward for argument's sake, they never let you down. No. You know, they always give everything. And and we can kind of cope, I think, as a country with one, maybe two players at the max coming in. But we need a good nine or ten playing regularly, in my opinion, to make yeah. to make us really competitive. And that's where we are at the moment. We've got those eight, nine, ten players playing regularly. And I'm happier with them playing in the championship than on a bench in the Premier League. I am. I prefer that. 100 percent mate. And the championship is so competitive that you have to be at it every week. Twice so, a week, every yeah. week, isn't it? And yeah. so if you're playing week in, week out in the championship, then you're going to come in sharp and yeah. ready to play. Yeah. And I think you saw that with you know with Daniel James and Keeper Moore who came in off the bench. They looked like it didn't take them any time to you know, get a pace and they were ready. And it's good. I, I'm nervous thinking about it. Like, you know? um, you're right, mate. <laughs> so uh, we can't go away without getting yeah. your prediction. So um, how what do you think the score is going to be in the game? I do think they'll score. So I think we're going to have to score a goal at least you know to get it to, to extra time and penalties i don't want penalties i think oh my, my, my ticket could take that I, I i i obviously i'd love a 2-1 win i would take that you know and um you know i, I think there are goals in us as well i think 
I think, you know, you mentioned him, Ethan, you watched Ethan when you when you watched the game on Thursday and, you know, you said he's a Rolls Royce. I think Brennan's another one. I watched him off the ball and he really pulls defences around and he terrifies them as well, you know. And it was interesting when we scored that first early goal, you know, we they had a lot of possession. You know, they had the ball a long time, but then it only took one opportunity for Brennan to get forward, get fouled, and then that brilliant free kick. So they're, they're going to be nervous of us, you know. Ari, Brennan, Brooksy, you know, up front, moving around, and then you've got Kiefer to come on, and you've got um, Dan James. Options. We've got, we've never, even the, the great 2016 team, I thought Sam Vokes was fantastic, and obviously the third goal was legendary. Mm-hmm. But he was very similar. He didn't offer a you know, similar-ish player to Hal Robson Carno. He was a sort of a nine. Whereas you feel now that we've got, there's no, there was no nine, was there, when we started. Uh, no, Brennan's no, not maybe. a natural nine, but he was allowed to roam across the front. But then Kiefer comes on as a traditional nine, holds the ball up. Dan is something slightly different in that, you know, he'll, he'll, get, he'll get over the top, he'll get behind you. And, and I know and a special mention to Kiefer Moore. I think he gets booked for being tall. You'd yeah. probably book him, actually, yeah. for being tall. Yeah. <laughs> he'd be booked before he's even Yeah, yeah. Him. I think the ref, the ref, the ref, I mean, it's a he's, short man. So yeah, yeah. That's what it is. I think, I think he's, um, I think he's unlucky in that respect, but because yeah. I think I think he's a, um, a physical player without being ever dirty, and he just gets penalised a lot and booked. But he's he's great when he comes on for us. I'm a big fan of Kiefer Moore. Yeah, me too. Me too. I just wish he hadn't gone to Ipswich. I know. I was, I was waiting for that. It is what it is, I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I'm going to stick with my three-one, which I did on my preview. I don't I'll want to take faith by changing. Um, but what I said before the Finland game, I think, still stands with this is that I said if Ethan Ampadu chucks out a 9 out of 10 performance I think Wales will do pretty well I'm the same Brennan I think if Brennan is 8 plus we win the game yeah. and I think the way they played against Finland if we can kind of mirror that in terms of the aggression and the pace and the and the tactical, tactical side of it like I said the way they were covering each other and shifting about like, I think Poland will find it difficult to live with the amount of pace that we've got yeah. as long as we do the same things in the middle of the pitch. However, um, that's it for our Wales talk. Um, fingers crossed that uh, tomorrow's the day and we'll be heading to Germany in the summer. Um, thank you, mate. Very welcome. Peace to football tonight, 25 to 11, BBC. Don't forget, tune in.